Hey everyone, it's Weston, and this will be hopefully a brief video on inspecting some of your brass in your cases for reloading to make sure everything's safe so that you can shoot your firearms to full potential. Alright, with that, a couple of things you're going to need will be things such as a magnifying glass. Even if you have really good vision, you still need it. And I find that one of the most useful tools are these things that old people use to read with, which as you can tell I have weighted down because it's not made to go this low, but it allows you to inspect your cases hand-free and run through a bunch very quickly. With that, what we're looking for are good, clean cases like this, able to make safe ammunition with no defects. But when you get into reloading, you'll notice a lot of your cases have some serious problems, and here are some that demonstrate these problems. Now, I'm going to put the camera behind this magnifying lens and try, you, try to show you a couple things, such as split necks, or crimps, or things that have impacted the side of the die, or been stepped on, so you know what you're looking for, and here are a couple of the examples I've chosen. So here we go, just for a moment. Make sure you can see through here. And let's see if we can get started. First thing I'm going to show you will be a 30 alt 6 brass. And if you look at this one, it's very slightly noticeable, but you'll notice there are dimps, dimples all around the shoulder here. This is a very bad sign. It shows you had pressure signs when you uh, reloaded and you either had too much lube on it or your neck has been pushed down some and caused it to crimp. Okay? Here's another issue with the neck on a 3030. This is one that's been shot several times, and now you can see as you went to run it, I went to run it through the resizing die, the neck actually could not support it and crushed down. So you don't want to use that, and you toss that one away. All right. Next would be something like heavy corrosion. This is a 30 alt six, which has a lot of corrosion. There's no reason to put this in your ultra nice rifles. So stay away from those unless I guess it would be an emergency. All right. Here's one of the first examples of the most common thing. This is known as a, <clears throat> excuse me. This is known as a split neck, and what this is, where the um, round has been shot so many times that the brass is super thin and it can no longer support itself, and it splits inside the throat or the chamber. Another example would be this in 223, and this one actually split so far as I pushed on it with my thumb, and it just went to nothing. It split all the way down into the neck. So those are no use, not any use anymore. And here's one example of a split neck on a pistol case. If I can get it just right for you to see it, it is split all the way down the entire side on this 38 Special. So you want to get rid of that one. Okay, another thing you'll notice are such as we call damage what you get at the range. This is a 45 ACP which has been stepped on. It doesn't take very much, they're very thin. This one has been crimped, and if you see any that have a hard crimp on this edge over probably 45 or more degrees, you just want to count those out and use them as scrap. Here's a 38 Special that if I hold it just like this, you can't tell it, but if I let it go, you'll notice it's bulged out on the bottom. This is where it's been shot so many times, you go to resize it, it actually, the expander ball pushes down so much, it causes it to crimp low in the shell and put a bulge in it. That won't work in any of your rounds. All right. Here's a 45 ACP. This happens a lot more than you think. If you'll notice, it has two uniform cuts on the side, and you're like, well, how did that happen? The way this happens is, ooh, excuse me, the way this happens is when you have a die and you don't get your 45 or your brass all the way in there, it will actually catch the lip when it goes up in your press and put a perfect crimp in it like that, and it ruins it forever. So sometimes you have to slow down. Next, this is a 38 Special that has been overexpanded. If you'll notice, it's really bulged out there on the end, and it won't even fit into the seating die. So that's why you go really slow on your expander. And if you see anything like this, you just need to check them by hand before you shove them in there and then throw them away. Here's a 45 ACP, which also has been shot too much. It has a weak neck. If you notice, if I run my thumb, it actually has a big bulge right there on the side where the expander ball pushed down into that one, and one side was stronger than the other because it's been weakened from shooting it. So you don't need to shoot that one anymore. All right. Another example would be this is what happens when your case catches the edge of your die, and it will just crush it before you can turn around. You won't even have any pressure on it. It'll just crush it. And this happens a lot, especially with these little straight walls like 38s and 45s. So sometimes you have to slow down. All right. One last thing that would be hard to look for would be something like this is a 5.8, a 5.7 by 2.8 Herstal and it's actually been crimped too much but if you look at it the shoulder has been mashed down too far by the by the full length resizer when this happens when you go to pull back up on them if they're too short on some of these small cartridges it will actually rip the case neck 
off of it. This one is completely useless now, and I had to disassemble the die and slowly cut and saw the neck off of the expander. So make sure you look at all your cases and go through them so you can load nice, good ammunition, and everything will come out for the better. Thank you. Please comment, rate, and subscribe.